Hello, uh, my name is Barry Alverson. I'm the Lake Lawrence Survey Chair for our Lake Management District. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about aquatic vegetation pre-survey preparation. Very important that you understand what you're gonna do before you do it and have the tools that you need. A lot of people ask, why do a lake survey? Well, number one is to check the health of your lake ecosystem. Uh, it determines the presence or absence of invasive species. And when you find out that you've got a diversity of species, it'll indicate you've got a healthy ecosystem. When you have a density of species in some areas and, no, and others uh, are vacant, uh, then you may have a problem. It also helps you track changes in your plant communities from one location to the other. What we've found in doing our surveys is we'll have a concentration of one specific aquatic vegetation in one area, then five years later, we'll find it another. When we were doing mowing uh, for about 20 years in the 1980s and 90s, we had certain weeds in one end of the lake uh, that weren't found in the other end of the lake. But after 20 years, we found those weeds at the other end of the lake. Uh, what we surmised was that the mowing didn't collect all of the stems uh, and plant parts, and they floated around the lake and deposited themselves in other parts of the lake, thereby starting weeds uh, in that area of the lake where there weren't any before. It also helps determine if corrective action is needed. If you need to do any type of raking or mowing or chemical treatment, uh, or maybe some other type of um, procedure. After any corrective action is taken, you need to conduct surveys uh, to determine the efficacy of the methods that you're used. Did they work or not? If not, why didn't they work? There are three steps to prepare for a lake survey, pre-survey procedures, field survey procedures, and summary, survey summary procedures. And that's what we'll be talking about today. This is my survey kit. This is what you need to conduct a survey. The weed rake, it's not shown here. I've got a video on there that shows you how to make one. Camera or camera phone is important to take photographs of your weeds if you don't know how to identify them or you can't identify them on the spot. A GPS, a range finder, a clipboard with a protective covering. So if it's raining, uh, you won't get your uh, paper wet. I use a uh, acetated sheet and I use a non-permanent marker to mark on them. And then after I get done with the survey, I transfer it to a permanent sheet. So you'll need markers, pens, pencils. I also bring gloves and rags because it gets wet and cold out there. The last survey we did a couple weeks ago, it was really cold and rainy. A ruler, uh, putting a ruler down beside the plants that you're going to take pictures of is a good idea. It gives a uh, perspective as to what the size of the plant is. Hand warmers, like I said, it gets cold. Uh, scissors, polarized sunglasses, uh, important to see down into the water, uh, gives you a better look at the weeds that are under the water. And a container uh, to put the samples in, and that's not shown. All this goes into a bucket and goes with me on every survey. Some of the things that you'll need also is a, a map of your lake. Uh, we did a bathmetric survey of Lake Lawrence in 1993 and we still use it. It's still pertinent. Uh, it also shows the deep parts of the lake, which if you're a fisherman and the, you got summer heat, when the summer heat comes, the fish go down low to, to get uh, cooler water. So you know where the fish might be hiding. If you're doing a lake survey, you know where your littoral areas are. That's areas normally between one and eight foot of depth. Uh, and those are the areas where you're gonna find most of your weeds. To uh, section out your lake, there's a couple different methods to do that. One of them is to take that bathmetric map and section it off in one to 300 foot, what they call aquatic vegetation assessment sites or AVAS sections. And then between each of these sections, you'd conduct one to three rake, th rake throws. It also shows offshore avasses. These are areas that you want to check to see if you have any weeds outside the littoral area. 
Another method, if you don't have a bathmetric map, you don't know what the littoral areas are, you can take a map of your lake. You can get this off of Google Maps. Uh, section off the lake in 250 by 250 foot uh, squares. Those are AVAS sections. And then at each section, you conduct one to three rake throws. It's a good idea to do this if you've never surveyed your lake before, just to find out uh, where the weeds are in your lake. But you're going to need a GPS if you don't have uh, good geographic locations or a topographical map or a bathmetric map. And a GPS is good anyway, because you're going out in the middle of the lake, get your sections right, and you'll be able to document the exact locations of where you find weed species. This is what we use at Lake Lawrence right now. Uh, these are all zones that were created over the last 35 years. We've added zones as we found uh, more weeds or if as new homes have been built around the lake and they are experiencing weed problems. We have 12 zones currently. Uh, and you can see that we've also identified how many acres are in each of those zones. And these are the actual littoral areas and the amount of acres in those littoral areas. The green areas are conservation areas where no aquatic vegetation can be treated, except when we find invasive non-native species. This is how we further subdivided the treatment zones that you just saw. We've taken each of those zones and we've subdivided them uh, into smaller areas and we do one to three rake throws in each of these areas. You'll see that how these areas correspond with our survey sheet in a minute. So we have 12 treatment zones with a total of 35 sub areas. Well, the other things that you'll need to do your survey is you'll need an identification uh, book. Uh, we bring several different sources with us. I'll give you a list of books and references at the end of this presentation. But we use the Thurston County Guide to Noxious Weeds. Uh, we take a, we have a picture book that's all laminated. These are photographs that we have taken of the weeds on our lake. We laminate them, we identify them, we mark them, and we take them with us out on our surveys. On the far left side of this screen is the Lake Lawrence uh, most common uh, native aquatic plants. We also have other sheets with this for the non-native plants, the invasive species, etc. This gives us an idea of what's on our lake. It also is a good pamphlet to have on the boat when you're going around and you have visitors or just send out to community members. So if they are going out on their dock and they find a weed in the water, they don't know what it is, they have a reference point and they can go to this and find it. This is our lake survey sheet. This is how we identify plant species and densities. As you'll see on the right side of this sheet, I'll call this method number one. I'll show you a couple other methods in a minute. We identify the species that we have on our lake. Now, these are the ones that we know about and that are the most common to our lake. And then we attach a code to those. The water nymph is WN. Water, fragrant water lily is FWL. A very simple, an abbreviation for the weed, basically. And then we identify the dominance. Now, we got our dominance from Thurston County, uh, previous aquatic resource specialist. It follows the main guidelines for Department of Ecology uh, and other uh, weed density uh, criteria that you'll see in a minute. But a dominance level of four means it's thick and excludes other weeds. Three is nearly monospecific patches. Two is few wide patches. One is few in one to three locations. And T is a trace amount, one to three plants on your rake and you pull it up. Now, these are two other methods that I've seen used. Uh, what you want to do is when you start doing your surveys, you want to pick one method and stick with it for consistency. But here you find uh, an, they got an abundance uh, code, no plants, code of Z, field measure is no plants. Trace plants, T, is a fingerful. Sparse plants, S, handful, three to six stems, medium plants, M, Rakeful, these are abbreviations that you use on your survey sheet, so you don't have to write the whole word out. And then method number three, uh, this is one that is uh, used by federal government a lot of times, and they use found, sparse, common, and dense to identify uh, their density of plants. We like the one that we use the best, uh, so that's why we use it. 
Next, I'll go into field survey procedures. Biggest question I get asked is, how many sites should I survey? Well, that kind of depends on what the goal of your survey is. But there are a few guidelines or rules that you might go by. Uh, at least one site per surface acre or per acre of littoral zone. That's why in our survey, you saw that we had treatment zones and each of those treatment zones was broken up into sub areas. And those sub areas are about one to one and a half acres each. If you're looking for invasive species, you gotta survey more sites. Cause sometimes they'll come into your lake through your boat launches and it'll be several years possibly before you identify where they're at. Uh, so you want to check your areas regularly. You want to check more sites. If you identify any invasive species at all, you want to check a lot of your lake to see if they've gone anywhere else. And if you're attempting to control plants in specific treatment areas, then more rake throws will be necessary because you got to identify exactly where the weeds are that you want to control. Because you don't want to put a lot of chemicals or spend a lot of time raking or mowing in areas where you don't need to. Focus on littoral areas. That's where you're going to find most of your weeds. Again. Those are areas where your depth of water is between one and eight feet. If you have a very clear lake uh, where you can see down 12, 15 feet, then you're going to have weeds growing a lot further down. But that doesn't necessarily mean the weeds are going to reach the surface and become a problem or a nuisance. In general, the more sites you sample, the more accurate your survey is going to be. So what are the first steps uh, in taking uh, a survey? Well. First, you have to enter the date on your survey sheet, air temperature, water temperature, weather conditions, and the names of the survey team uh, that are out there on the water with you. That way you know who went out with you and what they found. For consistency reasons, one survey individual might identify plants a little bit different than another one. So it's important to know who identified the plants on the survey. Second step is to know where you are. Your location, as you can see by the red arrows up there, our site code is targeted directly to our survey sheet and our map and treatment zones. And our rake pull areas are those sub areas on those treatment zones. And then the location, what we've done is, we've been doing this for so many years, we've identified geographic locations around the lakes and put an identification for those geographic locations on there. So when we're out in front of that geographic location, that's where we do our rake pulls. If you don't have geographic locations that you can use that are gonna stay there and uh, be consistent, then you need to use a GPS and write down the grid coordinates. We've done that as well uh, before we came up with uh, using geographic locations. As you can see, our survey map corresponds with our survey sheet. So now you're ready to conduct your survey what do you do? Well, you're out on the lake. Let's say we go to W001 sub area three and we throw our rake down and we check and see how deep the water is. We come up with four feet. We write that in on our survey sheet. Then we take and we throw the rakes out. On this rake throw, we got water nymph for Niad, which if you remember the survey sheet is coded WN. And this would be a dominance level about two. And there on the end of that rake, we've got some starry stonewort. That's a code SW, and that's about a dominance level one. So then we take and record that on our sheet like so. And you can see the SW stonewort, the green line, the red line goes to few in one to three locations. So it's a dominance level of one. And then WN, well, that's another one that's at the top, and you can see how that works. Here, did another rake throw, throw in another area, and we have common Elodea. Code for that is CE, and the dominance level here on this rake is a three. So that area was W003 sub area two, and we had a five foot depth, and then we threw our rakes and we collected the common Elodea, and we identified it as uh, a dominance of three and put that on our uh, sheet. One of the other things that you do as you go around and do these surveys and you get to each of those locations, as you can see, we have three different columns for species and dominance, and actually four different 
the locations for us. So if we have four different species in a rake throw or an area, we can document all of them. But we also use these areas to write down if we've got any surface plants like lilies and how big, how much lily we have there and how dominant it is and what type it is and what kind of noxious weeds we might have growing on the shoreline like yellow flag iris or uh, purple loose strife or knotweed uh, or whatever else you might have in your area. Uh, we've identified narrow leaf cattail on our lake and eradicated it very quickly because it was only a couple plants. So those are the kinds of things you want to look for, not just the aquatic plants, but your shoreline uh, and any plants that are going along there that probably shouldn't be there. The next thing you need to do is you need to take all this information and you need to make a summary of it so that you can catalog it and keep it. So ensure your data sheets are complete before you finish your survey, then permanently record the data. Like I said, that may not be a step you need to do. You may be doing that as you go. I use a uh, acetated sheet with a non-permanent marker. So when I get done with my survey, the first thing I do is I transfer that information to a hard sheet permanently. And then I take a map, that same map that I used, I make a copy of it and I annotate on that map where we found the different types of aquatic vegetation or shoreline vegetation and what type of vegetation we found. And then I report our findings. Uh, we make a digital copy of all of our findings and we submit them to our water resource uh, manager and our aquatic resource specialist with the county. You can probably do that with a city if you are a city lake management district or a city lake, or if you have a lake association and you aren't uh, aren't do not have any type of lake management district, Lake Association still would like to have this information and you may be doing surveys for them. So make sure that you file those reports with them. And your survey chair should keep a copy of these records for quite a long time. Uh, we've got copies currently dating back to 2008. So here's some identification resources for you. Uh, your local city, county, state, or federal aquatic biologist Departments of Ecology or Department of Fish and Wildlife have some excellent biologists and they're always friendly and helpful. Uh, we actually ask them to come out on surveys with us and occasionally they do. Local universities are a great resource. We have Washington State University and Extension Center in Puyallup, not far from where our lake is. And we've actually taken samples over there to have them identified. There's online perchable references as well. Uh, those are listed here, I'm not gonna read through them but you can take a screenshot of these and look them up if you want. Well, that concludes my presentation. That's the pre-survey preparation guide for you. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this presentation and it helps you in your efforts to maintain your lake better, keep your water quality high and better have better recreation on your lake. You have a great day. Bye.